Good morning, it's Irene with Brainstorm Acres. Now, it's a nice, bright, sunny Saturday morning, so I'm gonna take advantage of that. And what I mean by that is, we're off grid, so this is a perfect day for me to use electrical stuff, because right now, the solar panels are producing more electricity than the batteries can absorb. So this is the perfect time to use that extra electricity to do a job for us. Henry and I are really into cooking, and anybody who's paid attention for a while knows that we do a lot of stuff from scratch. I'll make English muffins, we make pizza, he does a lot of the regular cooking from scratch. I made a big soup the other day from the stock that he had made from the chicken, that sort of thing. But we very rarely let ourselves fall prey to, what would you say, fads in cooking. And about a year or so ago, we did fall into the Instapot fad. And to be honest, we were really disappointed with the results. We tried cooking a couple of chickens according to their instructions a couple of times and we're like, bleh, this is not nearly as good as the stuff that we can cook in the oven. So we kind of stashed it away for a while. And then I was thinking about it and I was thinking about the fact that I do make yogurt from scratch sometimes. One of the problems we have here is there's just two of us and we know that sometimes the milk is not handled particularly well in the grocery stores around here. They're a little careless. It isn't always kept as chill as it should be. So sometimes it just sort of barely makes it to the expiration date. And we hate to waste things. Now, if we do lose milk here, here's a garden tip for you. If our milk goes sour, it goes out in the garden because we have very alkaline soil here, which means that our tomatoes and other veggies that need access to good calcium often can't get it because the alkalinity binds it up. So what I do is I take spoiled milk and I literally pour it around the bottom of tomatoes plants and in beds, just regular garden beds. Now the only trouble with that is Jack likes the cheese that's made when milk spoils. <laughs> so sometimes I have to shoo him out of the garden beds because he'll go in there to eat the what to me would be just awful, but you know, cheese out of the garden beds. So, but aside from that, so we try not to let it go spoil. So I'll make yogurt with it. And one of the problems we have in our kitchen is because we're passive solar, our temperature swings quite a bit over the course of the day. When we have a really bright sunny day like today, it'll get pretty toasty in here. I don't know what the actual temperature in here is right now, but let's see if I can see the thermometer from here says 63 and that's in the shade over there. So it, it'll, it'll probably hit 70, 75 degrees in here later this afternoon. And then at night, it'll hit back down in the 60s, sometimes even in the 50s, depending on how cold we are outside and how many days in a row we've had sun or shade. But what we're trying to do is figure a better way to make the yogurt. In the winter time, a lot of times I wind up using a heating pad because I need that extra warmth to keep the yogurt culture growing well. In the summertime, you no, know, I can just sort of stash it in the corner and it'll do itself without any help because it'll be warm in here. But we decided we would try the Instapot and I was really impressed. So far, what we've been doing is we've been using their exact instructions, but my recipe. What they want you to do is pasteurize the milk first. And we have done that in the past. One of these days I'll try it when it's not as critical for me to have the yogurt. Uh, right now we're getting ready to go to an event, so I wanna make sure I have plenty of yogurt stashed for the event. And I could still make some at the end of the week, but I try not to have a lot of things to do at the end of the week <laughs> when things are getting really crazy. What I'm gonna do today is make a nice big batch of yogurt. Now, I asked Henry how much of the milk I should use. Did he need any for today? And he said, no, he's probably gonna to go to town anyway, so if he needs some, he can pick up some there. That is one thing we can get in town without having to drive forever. Simple recipe. All I'm gonna do is for every quart of milk, I'm gonna add a half a cup of powdered milk. And I have some good quality, unadulterated, no additional weird things added, uh, powdered milk over here from a big box store. You know, we buy it in quantities. 
So all I have to do is I've got this beast plugged in and I want to make sure I don't do this enough to, make, to have this totally memorized. Let's see, so they want me to pasteurize it first, so I'm gonna add milk to the inner pot, and then I'm gonna select the yogurt program. And this does have a yogurt program. I understand that some of the less expensive ones don't have the yogurt program. We did not want the tiny one, because when we cook any kind of slow cooking things, we usually cook a lot, and then we either preserve it, or freeze it, or use it for a couple of days. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour my quart of milk in here. I did last time cook it with the powdered milk in it too, so I'm gonna check and see how much milk I've got left here. It, this is not super mandatory to be precise. Um, when you bake, baking is chemistry. If you put in the wrong amount of baking soda or baking powder or any other leavening, leavening agent to make it rise, your stuff's not going to work right. But when you're cooking in some other forms, it's not as big a deal. All I'm going to be doing here is culturing this milk. So if I have an extra half a cup of milk or something like that in here, it's not going to make the world explode. Now that's three and a half cups of milk. Eh, just shy of three and a half cups. And that milk would have been good for like another two days, something like that. Last time it was a lot closer to expiration than this one was. But all I'm going to do is add this in here and got a half cup measure. That's for the first quart. And I'm gonna be stingy on the second one, but it's not gonna be that big a deal. There we go. Like I say, it doesn't make your head explode or the project explode if you put in an extra tablespoon of powdered milk. <laughs> there we go. Now, I am going to use a stainless steel spoon. When I cook, I generally use wooden spoons for things, but when I play with milk products like this, I like to go with stainless steel. Professional people who do cheese and milk and all that sort of stuff. Your containers are stainless steel, everything's disinfected. I'm not super disinfecting the planet here, but I, I did make sure the spoon was clean. And I just don't want to add any other contaminants that might culture along with the yogurt that I'm trying to culture. I don't want to add anything else in here. Now, in this case, I'm also going to be pasteurizing this, so it's a little less important, but I have a pussycat talking to me down there. She's singing. She just came in from outside, but she's deciding she wants to go back outside again. Right, Miss Issa? Okay, so I've got my milk in there. I've got my powdered milk in there, and I just need to put my lid on. <laughs> I'm such a klutz when it comes to this thing. I always fumble with my uh, regular pressure cooker too, and I've used that a lot more. There we go. Okay, now it's closed. And it still says off because I haven't turned it on. But the fact that it says off means it's using electricity. So under normal, sense, normal circumstances, I would never leave this plugged in. Now I have not added any yogurt to this mix yet, because if we're pasteurizing the milk, we're gonna kill all the pathogens that are in that milk. That would include the yogurt if I'd added it in. So I've got the stuff in there. All I do is hit yogurt twice. It selects the more thing, and then it displays boil. Right, and that means it's gonna cook it. So when it's finished, the cooker will beep and the LCD will display Y-O-G-T. That means it's homogenized this thing. So this is cooking now. It's going to sanitize the milk basically. And when it's done, I'm gonna to have to let the milk cool down and then I'm gonna make yogurt with it. So I'll see you in a little while.
I'm going to go do some other stuff. <laughs> oh, and by the way, <laughs> we still have our sweet potatoes. They're going crazy. The only problem we've had with these is that um, the leaves on some of the sprouts that we cut off started to brown. And I went back and looked at a couple of the videos from people who were doing this. And I realized that they had their slips stuffed into um, opaque containers, containers that wouldn't let the light shine through. And I had just grabbed a jar. So my roots were kind of getting a little bit more sun. And the minute I put it into this thing, which is just an old, fancy that, yogurt container, um, they started doing a lot better. There's still a couple of leaves that are a little crummy, but everything else is perked right back up. By the way, if I, if I pull this up here very gently, I have a zillion roots. So we're doing super well there. Um, Henry's actually suggested that what we might do is go ahead and plant uh, a couple of these in a pot. My concern is we're getting ready to go on the road for a week and we may not be able to keep the greenhouse cold enough, uh, warm enough, uh, because these are frost sensitive. But we'll see. We, as soon as we know we can keep the greenhouse frost, sense, uh, frost free, we'll um, put some of these into a pot because we're still growing a million of them. And we're only going to be able to grow so many plants. We only have so much space unless I can magically find some more pots. So, yeah, we are still sweet potato slipping along. Okay, we're back. And this has been about, oh, I want to say an hour or so. Um, last time they told me I should take the stainless steel liner out of the Instapot, put it on a rack and let it sit. Well, I have a problem with that. There's no lid for that. And when you put a lid on it, it also tends to keep the heat in. So it's kind of a catch-22 there. Uh, you want to keep the fuzzes out. I mean, we were, you know, my, my paper, my, my t towel here that my sister gave me says it all. Dog hair, both a condiment and a dress, a fashion accessory. Um, so I like to cover with something, but it doesn't come with any kind of a handy dandy clip on lid. And I settled for a towel and I have to admit, I'm in a hurry today. So I took a bowl of cold water and threw a couple of ice cubes in it and set this in here. Now I have a dairy thermometer in here that tells me that this is just fine. Uh, you, you do not want this more than 115 degrees or you will cook your yogurt culture. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this out of here and let it dry. Um, let me get this out of here. And now you can see that we also have a bunch of extra wires here. And the reason they're there is this is what's called WhatsApp Pro. It's actually a special watt meter for determining how much power you're using. And Henry and I were talking about it this morning and we're like, let's find out what this thing is really using. One of the problems we've discovered over the years is a lot of times a piece of machinery will tell you, oh, it uses this much. Mm, and sometimes that's not accurate. So we wanted to find out how much it uses really. Now what I just did was I just dried the bottom of that because I don't like putting wet things in there. Wet and electricity doesn't sound like it goes together well for me. So, okay, so I have my, wa my water, I have my milk. It's been heated, it's been boiled, and it has cooled down enough. Now I am going to take my yogurt. Now this is in a pint jar because it's some of the leftover yogurt from what I made last week. Uh, I made a really big batch because the milk was going to spoil and I didn't want to waste it. So this says for every quart of milk, throw in three tablespoons of yogurt. So I'm going to just sort of eyeball this. Again, it is not rocket scientist sort of things. Um, I'm being a little generous because I have more than that in terms of yogurt in here. I mean in terms of milk in here. So there, I now have that in. What I do is when I pull it out of the container, I immediately stick it out of the Instapot, I immediately stick it into a bunch of 
canning jars with lids and I stick them in the fridge. When I actually go to use them, whichever one I am using at the time gets one of these screw on plastic lids on top. That makes it super easy to spot the one that's already been opened. You're not having to open multiple things because sometimes they actually seal a little bit and I just want to keep everything clean. Okay, so this has now had the yogurt put into it. I'm stirring it up. All that does is sort of distribute the culture throughout the milk. The milk, as I said, is the right temperature. It is supposed to be, I think they say 115 degrees or less. Uh, 115 degrees or less. Less is better than more. More will kill your, your culture. Now, all I have to do Let's put this lid back on. Let's see if I can do better this time than I did last time. It doesn't matter whether this is in venting or in steam position because you're not going to be pressure cooking anything. And you're just selecting the yogurt program and adjusting it to normal mode, which is yogurt. And when you push it, it'll say either more or less or normal. It's just at normal now. You can increase it if you want. That three beeps lets me know it's doing the program. And now I just walk away. Now it's going to count down, or count up actually, it's going to count up for eight hours. And while it's doing that, I'm going to do everything else for the rest of the day. <laughs> and that's all there is to making yogurt with an Instapot. It's going to be very interesting to watch the watts and see what it actually does. Uh, right now I think it's decided that it's warm enough, so it's not, now there it goes. It just turned on momentarily and it zoomed right up to 970, it's varying. Oh, now we're up to over a thousand watts. Yeah, so that gives you a clue as to how much these things draw. Now that was a momentary use. In other words, it's back down again to zero, but that's quite a hit on your electrical system. One of the things I mentioned before was the fact that the light was on here even though the machine was off. And this was something that was talked about I want to say back in the 90s when there was, yeah, 1990s, when there was a big energy crunch. We lived in California and the whole thing was conserve, conserve, conserve. Then they talked about, and of course they were not LEDs in these things in those days. They were actually more of a light bulb sort of thing and they used more wattage. But every time you have a piece of equipment that has a light on it that's on all the time, you're using electricity all the time. And one of the things we do here when we're really in a bit of an electrical crunch because the weather's been crummy and we're trying to conserve and we're trying not to run the generator is we actually turn certain things off. Our television, for instance, sucks quite a bit of juice when it's just sitting there. It's not turned on on as in we're watching it. It's just sitting there humming along. Um, the VHS, the, you know, the, the, all those sort of things, the, the CD players, blah, 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 all that it gets off. It's on a plug strip and we flip it off. For people who live on grid, maybe that's not a big deal. Maybe you could only save a few pennies a month, but when you're off grid, every watt counts. So basically I'm going to come back in eight hours and this is going to be yogurt, <laughs> which is always kind of a little bit magical, but you know, so I'll see you later. Well, it's about eight hours later, and according to the Instapot, we have yogurt. So let's open her up and see if we do indeed have yogurt. Woo! I would say we have yogurt. Mmm, that smells pretty darn good too. Big server and spoon will be good enough. So what I need to do now is I just need to scoop this out of here. Woo! <laughs> And stick it in jars. <laughs> gooey, gooey. This is always messy. But it sure is tasty. And this will firm up even a little bit more overnight. Last time I let it sit in here a bit longer and that was okay it was delicious both ways I'm sure so but having that uh, 
<laughs> Canning funnel makes a big difference. A lot less messy. I've got some clean but not sterile rings and lids. And I'm just going to stick that right into the fridge. This is really warm, which is why it's uh, so goopy. Like a liquid sort of sour cream almost. We mostly use the yogurt with breakfast. I like it on granola, but you can eat it with fruit, fresh or frozen or canned or whatever. Makes a good snack too. The nice thing about this is because it doesn't have anything weird in it, it's a lot healthier for you than most of the store-bought yogurts, which have amazing quantities of trash thrown into them a lot of times. When you, start, If you were to read this in terms of ingredients, it would say milk and powdered milk. That's it. No extra sugar, no extra anything. It doesn't need sugars or starches. Oh, the only thing else it would have in it is the actual culture. It's really hard to find yogurt in the grocery store these days. It doesn't have something in it. But this is going to be really good. That is good. Now I'll use up the partial one first. Well, I hope this inspires you to try it. Um, this is certainly not the only way to make yogurt. Many, many years ago, in fact, my husband and I were trying to figure out how long ago it was. We had a yogurt maker. It was one of those things, I don't know. I don't remember if it was a gift or we got it at a yard sale or whatever, but it made little containers of yogurt. It worked really well, but it was big and klutzy and one single purpose thing and I don't know. It, we eventually got rid of it, sold it in another yard sale. This really works. Now, if you have a, a room that's temperature stable, you can, and warm, like 70s, you could probably just set the stuff on the counter out of the draft and have it work. I used to put mine on a heating pad, that worked just fine too. You gotta figure it's gonna take, if you don't have a heated source, you know, even with a heating pad sometimes, I used to leave it overnight usually, like I'd get it set in the evening and in the morning it'd be ready. Having this just work eight hours during the day, obviously it kind of clogs up the counter a little bit, but other than that, but this is really good. That's almost a quart and a, see that's about a cup. So a quart, two, let me see. Those are pints, so two pints and a quart. Okay, so two quarts and a, a cup we probably have less than two dollars worth of supplies in there. It's a lot of yogurt. This will last us about, um, you know, depending on what I have for breakfast, <laughs> week and a half, two weeks, maybe even three. So not a bad deal. You're not going to get it any less expensive. And you could add whatever you want for flavors. If you really want sweetenings, jellies and jams work great in it. Give it a try. Super easy. So I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know when we do something else because we got lots of stuff going on. Until next time. Bye. gonna eat your yogurt jack it's yummy he says I don't know I'm being fussy I'm being fussy about my yogurt <laughs>